Welcome back to Keep It Real Boxing. This is Cypher Box. Yesterday I did a video on apparent rumors regarding the offer made by Anthony Joshua to Deontay Wilder. An article came out uh, early hours this morning, which I read early hours this morning anyway, from The Telegraph here in the UK, confirming the offer that was made by Anthony Joshua to Deontay Wilder. Now, before I start going into this, um, this current situation, in regards to the negotiations between AJ and Deontay Wilder. Uh, I'm just gonna actually talk through some bullet points in terms from that article from the Telegraph. And then I'm gonna give you some stats, facts, and you know, throw in my opinions along the way with it all as well, okay? So the Telegraph have confirmed the following, yeah? That a flat fee offer has been offered to Deontay Wilder of 8.8 .8 million pounds, which is about 12.5 million dollars apparently Wilder's team has about 48 hours to respond to this in what is seen as a take it or leave it deal the contract does not state where the fight will be or when it will take place or even if it will be AJ's next fight AJ says they have offered three deals this week for the fight that will gross at least 60 million pounds. Shelley Finkel has said that this was the first offer which was made a flat fee with no place, date, venue, or even if this will be AJ's next fight. That's what Shelley Finkel has said in return, that they haven't made any other offers. This is the first one ever. Telegraph also says that this will be a flat fee for Deontay Wilder and a huge payday for Anthony Joshua. This next one's a little interesting. The two teams will discuss a 50-50 split for the rematch. Even if Anthony Joshua loses, they, they will still discuss a 50-50 split for the rematch. The AJ and Parker split worked out to 67% in favor of Anthony Joshua and 33% in favor of Joseph Parker. Let's not just remember that point, yeah? Really important. The fight's estimated worth will be approximately 75 million pounds, which is a roughly about a hundred million dollars. And doubling up to 150 million pounds over the two fights, which means it will probably be about 200 million dollars across both fights, yeah? The estimated worth. The rematch clause permits Wilder a second fight to take place in the US. Wilder has repeatedly, repeatedly said they would take 40% to fight AJ in the UK. Finkel has stated that they will respond with a counter offer in the next couple of days. Okay, so that's what basically the article said. Okay, so here's my take. All right, I'm going to start off by just probably putting a few questions out there, which I'm going to answer at the same time. Okay, so is Anthony Joshua the A-side in, in the negotiations? Yes, he is. Does AJ deserve the biggest slice of the pie? Yes, he does. Is this Wilder's biggest payday to date? Yes, it is. Is this a fair offer? Hell no. This is not a fair offer in my opinion. Okay, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go into it as to why, yeah? Look, it takes two to tango, all right? AJ needs Wilder as much as Wilder needs AJ. Neither fighter can make this this kind of money with anyone else, yeah? AJ can't make this kind of money with any other fighter on the planet. Wilder can't make this kind of money without AJ, or any, he can't make it with any other fighter on the planet either. It's as simple as that, okay? Both these guys need each other. And to generate that kind of money, a hundred million dollars worth, they need one another, and it takes two of them to do it, okay? Yes, AJ's the A side of it all, but in order for AJ to make that kind of money that he potentially could walk away with here, he needs Deontay Wilder to do that. And I'm gonna go into more detail into this and explain myself a little bit better as we go along. I mean, think about it, yeah? AJ couldn't make this kind of money with Joseph Parker. We've already just seen the fight. There's no way he made that kind of money or came anywhere close to generating that kind of money, yeah? He couldn't even make that kind of money with Klitschko. I think the first fight, AJ make 20 million or Klitschko got paid 20, they both got paid like 20 million I think, yeah? Even with the rematch against Klitschko, if that had happened, there's no way in my opinion they would have come close to making this kind of money. Because Klitschko's not a hype man. 
Yeah, he doesn't bring that kind of level of excitement or entertainment in terms of the build up of the fight and getting non existent boxing fans to want to tune in and watch the fight. Now, before I carry on, I just want to make a point. Yeah, I know what a lot of you are going to say in the comment section. I know already what a lot of you are going to say. Well, Deontay Wilder's only ever made his highest paydays like 2.2 million or 1.5 million and blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. Well, here's my rebuttal to all of that. Yeah, that was his value then. That's what he was valued at back then for those previous fights. It means absolutely jack when it comes to Anthony Joshua. We're talking about here, what we're talking about here is what his value is when it comes to Wilder versus AJ, AJ versus Wilder. What he brings to the table now for this fight. And if you're looking at that $100 million projected revenue figure, that tells you that Deontay Wilder brings a hell of a lot to the table. And his value and his stock has risen, has risen massively. Because it ain't just Anthony Joshua's name that's bringing in all that revenue. It's also because Anthony Joshua's name is attached to Deontay Wilder's, just like Deontay Wilder's name is attached to jo Anthony Joshua. I don't think anyone disagrees with the fact that this fight between AJ and Wilder will be a pay-per-view on both sides of the pond. Okay, in the UK and in the US. All right. Okay. AJ's fight, for example, against Klitschko was only a pay-per-view in the UK. Yeah, but it was shown on regular Showtime and HBO out in the US. It wasn't a pay-per-view out in the US. Wilder versus AJ, AJ versus Wilder, however you want to look at it, will be a pay-per-view fight on both sides of the pond. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. So there's one thing that uh, Deontay Wilder already brings to the table in terms of this fight. So let's talk about the demographics of the fight, yeah? In terms of the demographics and the market sizes for this fight, yeah? Everyone's talking about the business end of it, all, all the numbers, etc. That's what everyone's arguing about. So let's talk about it. And let's talk about the potential market size that this fight is looking to tap into <clears throat> compared to previous fights of Anthony Joshua's, okay? So Deontay Wilder brings a much bigger market with the US market, yeah, with which has a population of 327 million people. Okay, compared to Parker, who brought a market size with a population of 4.7 million. Okay, from New Zealand. And let's say he brings in the Australian market too, Parker, which is 24 million. That's a total of 28.7 million. And you have to consider how popular is a sport in those regions of the world, yeah? Going on my own assumptions, I would probably say that the sport is a lot more, the sport of boxing is a lot more popular in the US market than it is in Australia or New Zealand. You know, there's a richer history of the sport coming from the US. It, that's just my personal opinion, okay? Hence why the US market generates a lot more, more money for the sport, simple as that. Now, let's look at Vladimir Klitschko, who brings in the German market of 83 million in terms of a population, yeah? And the Euro maybe the uh, Ukrainian market you could throw into there as well, of 45 million, yeah? That's a total of 128 million. If you halve the US market, that would give you 163.5 million, which would still be more than what Klitschko brought in. And if I rem remember right, in Germany, they didn't show it as a pay-per-view against Anthony Joshua either. They showed it free live on TV. Now remember, I'm not saying that Deontay Wilder is going to bring 327 million people to the fight in terms of pay-per-view buys, etc. We know that's not going to happen. What I'm saying is look at the size of the market he, ha he brings in terms of the how the fight and the promoters can tap into. Yeah? And Deontay Wilder is a mouthpiece. He's not like Vladimir Klitschko or Joseph Parker, you know, um, polite and quiet, you know, respectful, all that sort of stuff. He's going to talk trash. He's going to open his mouth up to the whole world. He's going to hype the fight. He's already done it. He's already hyped the fight. 
with the way he's been talking. He's already brought the hype for the fight. Yeah, there's a massive interest in this fight already. That's why all boxing fans want to see this fight. Because of the talking that he's been doing. It's got nothing to do with Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua hasn't done anything to hype this fight. Let's be honest. He's talked a bit of trash here and there. But nothing compared to what Deontay Wilder's been doing. He's literally sold this fight near enough on his own. With everything he's done. And hence, through that, because of that, his popularity has grown massively. You know, a lot of people were saying before, oh, you know, no one knows who Deontay Wilder here is in the UK. I keep hearing those things as well. Well, if you don't know who Deontay Wilder is, how come you're talking about him? How come everyone's talking about him? He has a UK fan base as well. So don't give me any of that nonsense about, oh, he's not popular in the UK and all that. They don't know what he, who he is here or... People are going to turn around and also say, oh, well, he's not popular in the in the US and people don't know who he is, really knows who he is in the US. And you know what? That leads me to my next point. Let's talk about the next subject. Let's let's step away from the demographics now. All right. Let's talk about US viewerships. And the reason I spoke about those demographics, like, like I said, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying he brings all of America with him, that he brings a whole three three 327 million population with him to buy the fight that's not going to happen we know that but you could potentially tap into three four five maybe six million of that and that's because of Deontay Wilder that's what he brings to the table okay and going back to the point where I, a lot of you like to argue the fact that he's not popular in his own country that he can't sell in his own country let's talk about that let's go into now let's talk about US viewerships so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to look at the next, last, sorry, the last six fights for both Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, right, for when it comes to their US viewership, that's US viewership, okay, on Showtime, HBO, etc. So let's get into this. Okay, so let's go over the last six fights for Deontay Wilder in terms of US viewerships, yeah? Okay, how many viewers did he draw in for his last six fights? So let's start back in 2015, Wilder versus Johan Duhapas. That fight averaged at 2.2 million viewers, yeah, when it was shown. It also peaked at 2.36 million viewers. The next fight, 16th of January 2016, Arthur Spilker. Now that fight averaged at 500,000 viewers. Okay, which peaked at 623,000 viewers. Now, a lot of you people are saying, see, look how low that number is. Yeah, and you're right, it is a very low number. Okay, but also on that night, Deontay Wilder was competing against the NFL playoffs, where you had the Green Bay Packers versus Ariz the Arizona Cardinals playing in the NF play NFL playoffs at the same time slot. And that NFL game drew in 33.4 million viewers. So it's fair to say that he had some tough competition on that night. Okay, and as you know, the NFL is massive in the US. All right, so that number of 500,000 averaged, yeah, you know, was affected definitely by the NFL playoffs that night. Next fight. Chris Ariola, 16th of July 2016, which averaged at 2.54 million viewers. Moving on to the next fight, the 25th of February 2017, Gerald Washington. That fight peaked at, sorry, averaged at 1.76 million viewers, and it peaked at 1.86 million viewers. Next fight. The Main Stavern, the rematch. 4th of November 2017, that fight averaged at 824,000 viewers and peaked at 887,000 viewers. Once again, he had some competition on that night. Okay, in Madison Square Garden, we had UFC 217 going on as well. So, Again, I think you would agree he had some stiff competition that night in terms of another combat sport which was being aired 
his last fight against Luis Ortiz on the 3rd of March 2018. Average viewership was 1.1 million. Peaked at 1.2 million. Again, he had stiff competition that night. Because in New York, you had HBO's live card of Kovilev versus McCallican, McCallican, whatever his name is, you know what I'm about. You also had Dimitri Bivol facing Sullivan Barrera on that same card. Also on that night, you had UFC 222 going on. So it's fair to say he had some seriously stiff competition that night and still managed to pull out an average viewership of 1.1 million. So now let's look at Anthony Joshua's last six fights in, term of, in terms of US viewership. Okay, because I know all of you like to talk about the US viewership, so let's talk about it, all right? 9th of April, 2016, his US debut versus Charles Martin for the IBF title. That fight averaged at 275,000 viewers. It peaked at 317,000 viewers. Next fight, 25th of June, 2016, Dominic Brazil which averaged at 289,000 views. And remember, Brazil was his first title defense. Next fight, 10th of December 2016 versus Eric Molina. The live average viewership for that fight was 368,000 viewers. It peaked at 390,000 viewers. The replay, which was shown later on in the day, averaged at 224,000 viewers and peaked at 244,000 viewers. Moving on, Vladimir Klitschko, which was Anthony Joshua's biggest fight to date, no doubt about it. Even though it says it was Joseph Parker, it wasn't. It was Vladimir Klitschko on the 29th of April, 2017. Okay, so this was split between both Showtime and HBO. Showtime had a contract with AJ, HBO had a contract with Vladimir Klitschko. So Showtime got, got to show the fight live and HBO five hours later showed the replay. So when it, showed lo when it was showed live on Showtime, it averaged at 659,000 viewers. It peaked at 763,000 viewers. HBO's replay five hours later it averaged at 738,000 viewers and peaked at 890,000 viewers. Next fight. 28th of October 2017, Carlos Takam. Right? Live, when that was shown live in the US, the average viewership for that was 334,000. The replay averaged at 309,000 viewers. Joseph Parker. 31st of March 2018, Anthony Joshua's last fight. Live, that fight averaged in the US, in terms of US viewership, it averaged 346,000 viewers, peaked at 379,000 viewers. The replay averaged at 430,000 viewers and peaked at 483,000 viewers. So, over the last six fights, for both fighters, that's Wilder and Anthony Joshua, their total average viewerships are, are the following, yeah? Wilder's average total is 8,924,000 viewers. AJ's is 3,972,000 viewers. Which means that gives you a, a variance of 4,952,000 viewers more that Deontay Wilder has drawn in over the last six fights than Anthony Joshua in the US. So in short, don't tell me Deontay Wilder doesn't sell in the US because those numbers quite clearly tell me he does. And I don't wanna hear it. And not only that, he does it better than Anthony Joshua. And as I explained while I was telling you the viewership numbers, I was also telling you what those viewership numbers were competing against. And he was going up against, Deontay Wilder was going up against some stiff competitions on some nights, like UFC, the NFL, yeah? Okay, other boxing events that were going on, sometimes in the same city as well, 
of New York. You know, everyone talks about the numbers that Anthony Joshua does here in the UK, and he does, he does massive numbers, okay? I'm not denying that. But his fights show about, what time? About 10 p.m., 10.30? What other ma major event, sporting event, is going on at that time here in the UK? There isn't. I've said this before, by the way, I've done a video like this before. There isn't any competition. Let's say we put Anthony Joshua on at the same time as the FA Cup final. Okay, and for those of you, for those of you who don't live in the UK or from the US, I'm talking about football, European football here. Yeah, let's put him up against the FA Cup final or a nail biting uh, final day match. You know, in the Premier League chase, title chase, or even better. Let's put him up against the Champions League final. How would Anthony Joshua do then, here in the UK? Would he still pull out a few million in terms of pay-per-view buys? Or would people just watch it on the repeat? Buy and record and watch the rerun the next day? You know, because Sky Sports give you that option. You can buy um, the live pay-per-view there and then and then you can record it, or you can buy the replay and watch it the next day or whatever yeah it'd be interesting to see so when you guys criticize Deontay Wilder about his viewership back home in the US stop and think what was he competing against not only that if you put Anthony Joshua in the same situation here like against the Champions League final how would he do would he still bring in the million pay-per-view buys that he does now don't know I'd question that not only that remember the US market is the hardest market in the world to crack it's harder than the UK market the UK market is the size of is with the population here in the UK which is 67 million is a lot smaller than the US market of 327 million it's a harder market to crack yeah it's a harder market to conquer to promote yourself and get your name out to every individual it's way harder everyone knows that you go and ask any major corporation or business they'll tell you the same thing now based on the numbers that i've just given you in terms of demographics us viewership yeah what Deontay Wilder was competing against in terms of those viewerships okay you can't tell me the offer of 12.5 million dollars to fight Anthony Joshua is fair because Deontay Wilder clearly brings a hell of a lot to the table Eddie Hearn himself has said on numerous occasions that Deontay Wilder brings a hell of a lot more than Joseph Parker okay because he brings the US market with him the biggest market in the world the toughest market in the world that's Eddie Hearn he said that so many times himself so how the hell can you justify offering him 12.5 million dollars when he's bringing all that revenue potential revenue in this fight's worth is looking at rev in terms of revenue is looking at you're looking at a hundred million dollars and you're gonna give him 12.5 million of that and the rest goes to AJ sorry I don't think that's fair at all I don't think it's a fair offer and not only that let's talk about the rematch clause that they will discuss a 50 50 split even if Anthony Joshua loses sorry correct me if I'm wrong but if you lose the first fight, you're no longer the A side. You're now the B side. Yeah? Like David Hay versus Tony Bellew. David Hay was the A side in the first fight. Tony Bellew was the B side in the second fight. David Hay lost the fight. So in the rematch, Tony Bellew's now the A side. And David Hay is the B side. Sorry to say, but this contract is a slave contract, which is full of poison pellets okay I mean look at the other clause in the contract 
well not a clause, but look at the conditions of the contract. You know, Shelley Finkel has confirmed there is no date for the fight in the contract. There's no venue where the fight's going to take place. Okay? There's no, there's not even anything that says in the contract that Anthony jo this will be Anthony Joshua's next fight. It just says they will fight which is open to t t interpretation, which means if Deontay Wilder signs that contract, they could turn around and say, all right, when we, are we gonna fight next? When we fight before the end of 2018? And Eddie Hearn could turn around and say, well, we said, you know, we didn't, it doesn't say that in the contract that you're gonna get Anthony Joshua next. It just said you will get Anthony Joshua at say, some stage. So we're planning for the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020. Do you see what I'm trying to say? It's left wide open. In the contract, it needs to clearly state Okay, where the venue is, well, it doesn't have to say the venue, but it does need to say the date the fight's going to take place and that yes, it's going to be Anthony Joshua's next fight. Because then otherwise it's, it leaves Wilder hanging because he'll just sit there waiting for them to turn around and say when they're ready to make uh, have the fight, which could be at the end of 2018 for you know. That's what I'm talking about, poison pellets in the contract. It's a slave contract, which gives AJ, or should I say Eddie Hearn, complete control and power over Deontay Wilder. This is something that Don King would come up with. Seriously, I'm not joking. This is something, a contract sort of that Don King would come up with. Yeah? It gives them complete control, not just over the first fight, but over the rematch as well, because they're turning around and saying 50-50 will be the split for the rematch. But why should, if Deontay Wilder is not deserved of, you know, 50% in the first fight, if he beats Anthony Joshua, then Anthony Joshua is not deserved of 50% in the rematch because Deontay Wilder was the winner. So his percentage should be higher than Anthony Joshua in the rematch. He should get a bigger slice of the pie in the rematch if he beats Anthony Joshua. You know why they want to put that 50-50 clause in there? Because they put a clause in the contract saying that a rematch will take place in America, which will probably take place in Las Vegas. And the money in Las Vegas, Eddie Hearn knows, the money in Las Vegas is bigger than it is here in the UK because you have all the cas casinos. The casinos who, who, who pump in a load of money into the fight. Yeah? The amount of revenue the fight would generate in terms of merchandising and retail let's not forget that as well in the even with the first fight merchandising and retail don't forget that as well you know doesn't Deontay Wilder deserve a bit of that as well no just a flat free of 12.5 million dollars but like I said about the rematch in Las Vegas merchandising retail etc pay-per-view numbers that's why they're trying to get him to sign this contract. It's a slave contract where Anthony Joshua massively, or should I say Eddie Hearn, because he's the dodgy promoter here, the new Don King, I'm gonna call him from now on. This is where he massively gains financially if Deontay Wilder signs this fight. Because even if Anthony Joshua loses, haha, <laughs> I still get 50-50 of the rematch. My company, Matchroom, Matchroom Boxing, still makes a ton load of money. Listen, I've said it to you guys before. You can accept all this bullshit from Eddie Hearn. Don't expect me to though, yeah? I'm not falling for it. You're not gonna mug me off, yeah? This is a con job, yeah? This is a Don King move, all right? This is a slave contract which has been offered to Deontay Wilder. And you can curse me out and slag me off as much as you want in the comment section. I don't care, because I'm right in what I'm saying. This is a con job and Deontay Wilder should take the contract yeah, and throw it in Eddie Hearn's face. Shove it down his throat. I'll be interested to see what Shelly Finkel comes up and what Shelly Finkel comes up in terms of uh, a counter offer now. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I haven't heard anything from Eddie Hearn either. You know, usually you would think Eddie Hearn would, if, if this was not true in terms of the offer they made, Usually you think Eddie Hearn would jump out there straight away and say, do an IFL interview and say, no, that's not what we offered. You know, maybe he will. 
don't know, you know, maybe Coogan Cassius, you know, has arranged maybe at some point this week to go and meet Eddie Hearn and, and discuss all of this in terms of what the contract that's been offered. But part of me feels that this is the contract that has been offered because if you go and look, if you go and watch the interview that AJ did with Sky Sports when he was announcing that they were about to make this offer to Deontay Wilder, he didn't seem, like I said, he didn't seem very confident, seemed a bit nervous talking about it. You know, he didn't talk about the details of the contract. He doesn't need to, don't get me wrong, but he just seemed a bit nervous about when he was talking about the contract. And the way he was talking, I'm a smart businessman, you know? And my boy T-Dub on What's Blazing in Sports, his channel What's Blazing in Sports, he did a video and he made a good point and I agree with him, you know, about the fact that he was talking, I'm a smart businessman, I'm very intelligent. You know, the offer that I'm making to Deontay Wilder, you know, if this had been offered to me when I was at the, the stage that Deontay Wilder is in terms of his popularity and blah, 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 I would take, grab it with both hands, trying to make out like this, this was a great contract and offer that they, they, he was selling to Deontay Wilder. You know, I do agree with what T-Dub was saying on what's blazing a sports. So, you know, it kind of makes me feel that this is actually probably the offer that's been made. But, you know, oh, give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what Eddie Hearn says in return. Maybe he'll come back and say, do an IFL interview. No, that's not what we quite offered. This is what we offered. But then again, I can't believe Eddie Hearn either because he lies so much. He contradicts himself and he lies so much. It's unbelievable and I've proven that time and time again. I'm not going to do it again in this video. Go watch my other videos. There's the proof. Yeah? But he does. He lies so much. So even if he did come out and say that, you, would, I would probably think to myself, well, hold on, you've bullshitted about everything else along the way since last year about this fight, potential fight between AJ and Wilder. You know what I mean? How am I going to believe you this time round? Do you get what I'm trying to say? You can't. I can't take his word for it anymore. And another thing that's just come to my mind, yeah, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. And a lot of people talk about how AJ sells so many pay-per-views out here in the UK, etc., etc. And yeah, he does. Hats off to him. But let's not forget. Let's think about the price difference in a pay in terms of a pay-per-view cost here in the UK and the pay-per-view cost in the US. All right. In the US, a pay-per-view is marketed at between. 40 to 60 dollars for a pay-per-view unless it's a mayweather fight a big mayweather fight which is about a hundred dollars okay that's a lot of money for people to pay for a pay-per-view now let's flip it here in the uk we charge roughly between 16 to 20 pounds for a pay-per-view fight on sky box office let's say eddie eddie turned around and said for the next fight for anthony joshua he was going to charge 60 60 pounds 60 pounds would you pay 60 pounds to watch aj fight every time or would you stream it illegally how many people would stream it illegally or how how many people will wait till someone posts it up on youtube or daily motion or another uh, platform similar to youtube It'd be interested to see how much, how many people would buy that pay-per-view if Eddie Hearn charged sixty pounds for every time Anthony Joshua fights. Don't forget that as well. There's a massive cost difference here as well. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper to buy a pay-per-view here in the UK than it is in the US. When you think twenty dollars, uh, twenty pounds, sorry, you think, all oh, right, it's only twenty quid. But if you turn around and someone said to you sixty, sixty pounds or sixty-five pounds, you'd be like, hmm, don't know whether I want to pay for that. That's a bit much. Actually, here in the UK, we would go nuts. Eddie Hearn has said it plenty of times that the UK fan base would go absolutely nuts if he was to charge that sort of money for a pay-per-view. He said it plenty of times. So don't forget, take that into consideration when you start talking about the fact that Anthony Joshua 
sells loads of pay-per-views out here in the UK. Don't, don't forget to take the cost value to an individual when paying for that pay-per-view. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play you a sound clip. And this clip is of Richard Schaefer talking to a group of journalists regarding this offer made by Anthony Joshua to Deontay Wilder. And he basically gives his take on the whole situation. And one thing about I like about Richard Schaefer, very smart businessman, very intelligent, knows his numbers, yeah? Knows his numbers very well, okay? So he's talking obviously off the top of his head, but he's that kind of businessman that he can do that. So I'm just gonna play you the sound clip and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it. Obviously, you know, making an offer, you can make an offer saying that we want to fight, but your offer is such that you really don't want to fight. And that's what that shows. I mean, they fought uh, Joseph Parker and they gave Joseph Parker 33%. It was a 33% deal. 77 percent, uh, uh, you know, to 67 percent to, to uh, Anthony and 33 percent to jo Joseph Parker, world title unification bout. Now we all know that Deontay Wilder is worth substantially more than Joseph Parker um, because Deontay Wilder does bring the U.S. market to the table, which is substantial. So if they, in fact, offered him 12 and a half million, which I have a tough time to believe because I don't think that even Eddie Hearn would stoop that low. Uh, that would be 12 and a half percent of a potent. I mean, that would basically tells you that they don't want to fight. Well, if they offered, uh, if they, I mean, I said before, in my opinion, because of the revenue implications, and I explained it before, uh, I think it should be 50-50. Both are champions, both bring something to the market. Each one of the guys is going to make you substantially more money if they fight each other than if they fight other guys. So I personally think, uh, and I could really walk somebody through the numbers, uh, because I know the pay-per-view business probably better than most, uh, I say it should be 50-50, but let's say it's not 50-50. Let's say it's it's 45, 45-55, or even if it's 60-40. Uh, I mean, you really can't go lower than that because, again, they gave 33% to to Joseph Parker. So how can it be possibly be the same or less than that? If it's the same or less than that, then the message is very clear. And fight fans and media guys don't be fooled. They don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. Well, I mean, I was actually, if you would have asked me uh, half an hour ago, I would have said it's pretty good. Uh, but now what I just heard, again, if that is really true, the 12 and a half million, if that is really true, then I think the likelihood that we're going to get it is pretty slim. Because one guy, and his name is not Deontay Wilder, doesn't want it. And, you know, truth be told, I'm actually not so sure whether if it's one guy, you know, that one guy might actually, we know it's not Deontay Wilder, but it actually might not be Anthony Joshua either. There actually might be another guy who doesn't want it, and his initials are E.H. <laughs> So there you have it. That was Richard Schaefer's take on this recent offer that was made to Deontay Wilder from Anthony Joshua. And he said a lot of things in there. You know, he talked about the US market, which I've touched on, that Deontay Wilder brings the US market. Okay. He's talked about pay-per-view there as well, which I've touched on again. Okay. He's talked about, in terms of the split, he believes it should be a 50-50 split because both are champions and both bring a lot to the fight in terms of the market. He, he said he also said if it isn't 50-50, then it's at least 65-35 or 60-40 or in favor of Ray J. But he said also at the same time, if this is the offer that's being made, it clearly tells you that they don't want the fight. But then he made a really good point there right at the end of the video yeah he made a really good point which was maybe he definitely th doesn't think it's Deontay Wilder who doesn't want the fight but he's also saying well maybe it's not Anthony Joshua either maybe Anthony Joshua actually wants the fight maybe it's Anthony Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn 
who doesn't want the fight. That he's the one who's blocking and trying to make it impossible for this fight to take place to happen. Because of the, the risks that are involved in going up against Deontay Wilder. Because of how dangerous he is in the ring. And Eddie Hearn himself, again, before you say anything, has said that himself. Yeah, he said it on numerous occasions that, especially after the Ortiz fight, that Deontay Wilder is dangerous. Yeah, he contradicted himself, say, oh, you know, AJ will win that fight, but, you know, it's not a, it's an easy fight, but Deontay Wilder is dangerous, though. He is a dangerous fighter. Which is it? He's either an easy fight or he's a dangerous fight. Yeah, but maybe it is Eddie Hearn. It makes me think, is Anthony Joshua in control of his career like he thinks he is? Or is Eddie Hearn just allowing him to think, feel and believe that he is? But secretly, he's behind AJ, pulling all the strings, telling him what to say, telling him what to do. Because remember, Anthony Joshua on numerous occasions has said he trusts his team, i.e. Eddie Hearn, 100%. He's learned a lot from Eddie Hearn. He listens to everything Eddie Hearn tells him. So it wouldn't be that difficult to kind of manipulate and trick AJ into believing the things that you're telling him. So is it the fact that Eddie, Hay Eddie Hearn's manipulating Anthony Joshua into thinking that he's in control, that he's the boss and Eddie Hearn's the employee? When actually, in actual fact, Eddie Hearn's the boss and AJ's the employee. Do you see what I'm trying to say? It makes me wonder, you know, I don't know AJ on a personal level, but I know one thing for sure, he says all the time he's got 100% in Eddie Hearn and his team behind him. And when you have that, put that much trust, when it comes to business and money, you put that much trust into someone, trust me, I know what I'm talking about here. When you put that much trust into someone, when it comes to money and business, okay, believe me, the guy on the other side will see an opportunity to take advantage of that. Eddie Hearn is a businessman and a promoter. He's all about making money. If Anthony Joshua lost his next two, three fights and that's it, he was done, you know, or, um, you know, that dropped him down in terms of where he stood in terms of his status in world boxing, do you think Eddie Hearn would care? He'd be thinking, all right, I'll keep promoting you, but I'm going to find the next star now because you're done. You know, I'm done with you. I'll keep trying to make fights for you and pushing you forward and hopefully, you know, maybe one day you'll come back. But right now I need to focus on another star. I need another star. I need to create another star. This is what people fail to understand. If AJ was to start losing, Eddie Hearn would, would back off and think, mm, okay, I'm done with you. I've gotten everything I can out of you clearly, so it's time to find the next star. That's what promoters do. They move on to the next star and drop their old ones. So it makes me wonder if AJ is fully in control of his own career. Or is he being led to believe he is the boss? Interesting points to think about, I think. And let's not forget what else Deontay Wilder brings to this fight, which none of Anthony Joshua's previous opponents, maybe Dillian White, but no one else has ever brought. That is a personality. A charismatic personality. Okay? This is a guy who sells. Eddie Hearn has said that himself, that this guy sells. Yeah? Great talker. He's got the look. He's got the attitude to it. He's going to hype the fight beautifully. He's already done it. Imagine if a contract gets signed, how much he's going to hype this fight even more. Massively. The guy's like a salesman in his, in his own right. It's a microphone. You can't shut him up. There's no filter to him as well. That's what makes it more interesting. That these two guys are complete opposites of one another. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Don't forget that value of Deontay Wilder as well. Okay, well, I think I've said enough here, to be honest with you, regards to what Deontay Wilder brings to his fight. His commercial value is underrated, to say the least, by the opposition and by many of you. Yeah, he brings a lot commercially to this fight. So if we're talking about contracts, we're talking about business, then I totally disagree with the offer that's made. I think it's unfair. I think it's a low blow. Yeah, I think it's a slave contract, a con job. 
And do you know what? I won't blame Deontay Wilder if he turns down the offer. Personally. I wouldn't blame him at all. Ask yourself this question. If you were in Deontay Wilder's position, after everything I've just told you and said, would you accept that contract? Would you say yes to it? I think the answer for most of you people out there, actually for everyone, including myself, would be no. You wouldn't accept it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you on this one. As always, like, share and subscribe. Until next time, this is Cypherbox reminding you to keep it real.